So the cat got really sick yesterday. Like, very, oh. very sick. Like, I went to work, and when I came home from work, there were, like, little little liquidus piles across the floor. Ooh. Several. Like, she was very, very sick, and it was... I don't know what she could have possibly got into in this room with no one else around, but um, the, no one worry. The baby is fine. She's very adorable, and currently curled up on the bed right there but you like last night i could tell that she was very exhausted <laughs> like she was she was i got home at like 8 30 9 o'clock and she was giving me the like all right we're going to bed now <laughs> i've been i've been exhausted all day we're going to bed and she's been yeah yeah so it's, the cat's i been, mean it, it it is the illness time of year you know it is officially it is. fall the time has changed yeah. Oh God. That's that was the other thing, and she was very upset that she felt like her dinner was an hour late. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, it was it was she was a glass box of emotions all day yesterday. Uh, but this is not a pets and cats podcast as much as I might like it to be sometimes. Because I mean, look at her. Hmm. You can see that little ear right there poking up. She's adorable, and I I I'm obsessed with her. In many ways, but this is not a cat I mean, with podcast. A slight change to our format, we could be a cat sure. podcast. You know that is true. I have considered because I'm still wor- I'm still working on the bringing back the Monday Night Magic live streams. I've been th- considering getting an additional camera specifically as a cat cam because mm, I've got like cam. I've got a, I've got a little dresser that's like up higher next to my desk, and her bed is on it, and she is often like curled up in that little bed though lately she's been curling up in the bed a lot more i think she thinks it's hers uh so Mm. i would need some kind of of cat watch cam for for that but again this is not a cat podcast this is of course a (laughs) a D &D and magic the gathering podcast duels and mana dorks welcome to the duels and mana dorks podcast a D &D and magic the gathering podcast i am connor and i am sam we are the dungeon bros but we are not brothers nor are we in a dungeon. No, no, we are not. No, we are not. And lately, we've been having a, a third, an honorary bro, if you will, a step bro, you know, a bro mm-hmm. from another mo, if you will, in Typical Gemini coming on. We recently had him for a Duskborn set review a little bit later uh, than we were originally planning. I had some things come up and made scheduling difficult, but we just did an emergency, like, Magicon had a lot of shit we need to talk about, and we can't wait a week. Uh, podcast, which is already out as of the recording of this, so you can check that one out for all of the like detailed thoughts for what has come out of MagicCon Las Vegas. We'll, of course, give a quick rundown of those things once we get through the upcoming releases, and we're going to have a Foundations review uh, in the coming probably week or two <laughs> at this rate, because the shit just is always happening, and there's, uh, there's no time to breathe at all. Um, the D- yeah, the uh, the Dungeon Master's Guide is also about to come out, so we're going to need to get our hands on that. We did not get an early copy of it this time. Um, our friend Ivy did though; like, she got sent like a whole Dungeon Master's Guide care package, and I was like, on, and I was like on Twitter, I was like, mm. "You bitch." <laughs> 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 but it's fair; she's amazing, so it's all good. Um, Sam, how the, how the hell are you? You're you're in a different locale than you would normally yes. be seen at this point. Yes, so I am uh, currently house-sitting, dog-sitting, and cat-sitting for my family as they are out of the country. So, yes, I'm actually set up in um, one of my childhood bedrooms. Oh, that's why it is so barren and full of random trophies and memorabilia from from activities long for- past. Uh, yeah, pretty much. It's like half the room stayed the same, and then mm-hmm. the half you can't see became my dad's office. So, Oh, that's perfect. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so is it like a Kevin McAllister situation where they like left you at the airport or was this like a pre-planned thing? Are you setting booby traps in, in the case of robbers? Mm. Um, didn't leave me at the airport. Uh, they went there without me. However, mm-hmm. yes, I am setting booby traps. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll hopefully remember to disable them before they get back. Mm-hmm. And some traps that look like boobies as well. Oh, absolutely. That, yeah. That's what I thought you meant. Yeah, just... Just, oh. you know, uh, you walk in the door, you pull a string, and suddenly just uh, a picture of boobs comes up. Boobs. And then it, like, 
sprays yeah. you with mace, right, like out of the nipples, like a mace, you know, yeah. as a defense exactly. mechanism. Yeah, yeah. A couple of, um, a couple of taser. <laughs> it's very Austin Powers, you know, like the, the first Austin Powers with the fembots where they're like shooting oh, yeah. people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Austin Powers. Oh, Michael Myers. What a, what a guy. He did. What a guy. He, he did something to society. Uh, another thing that's happening to, to the society, if I can speak today. Jesus. Um, I'm very glad that I am not. I work, I work at a television station, as some of you might know. Mm -hmm. And I'm very glad that I am not working today, as it is election day in America, at the very yep. least. And uh, who doggy, I'm glad I don't have to deal with all of the fucking crazies that are going to be on the news today. So that's, that's very exciting. I also don't have to work tomorrow, so I don't have to deal with the immediate fallout of like, oh my god, we don't know who the president is yet. So. Yeah, that's, uh, did you do your civic duty? I, uh, I have not yet done my civic duty. That will, of course, come after the recording of this podcast. You know, you gotta, even, mm -hmm. even if you, even if you don't like the presidential candidates. A lot of people have very strong feelings. So, you know, vote with your conscience. I don't give a shit who you vote for, but it's very important. You gotta, you gotta vote specifically because of all those down ballot, uh, elections that are going on. The stuff that's going to be way more important to like you and me and everyone else are going to be like your city council and like your attorney general and like all the stuff for your state and your local community, mm -hmm. way more impactful than who the fuck the president is. So just saying that's vote, true. Sure. Get out there, civic duty. I always find it a little cringe when when like election season comes around and then all these creators like make the election like their whole th their whole thing. You know, their entire presence is like you gotta get out and vote yeah. because they. I assume most people think they can just get people to vote how they would want them to vote um, instead of just like actually genuinely being like, hey, vote for whoever you want. You just need to make sure that you do something. Just do it. Yeah, because like two thirds of Americans don't, don't even by. vote. It's crazy. It's like less than a third of the country decides who these, who our president is, just because most people don't go out and vote, um, which is kind of sad in a lot of ways. But you know, it is what it is. Uh, enjoy your day off from work if you are having that. Um, this is my normal weekend, so like. <laughs> I don't get anything special, but anyway, anyway, of course, we've got to do the rundown. You can get the Duels and Mandorks podcast every other week early and ad free on our Patreon, patreon.com slash the Dungeon Bros, where we post every other Wednesday. Uh, you can get it in free feeds the following Monday for all of the podcasting services around the globe. Ac Apple, uh, RIP to Google Podcasts. May they rest in peace. Uh, YouTube Music, YouTube Podcasts, Spotify, even. You can get us on like Alexa, I'm pretty sure. I, I looked at the analytics. I think a good number of people listen to Alexa podcasts, which I didn't know was a thing. So that's interesting. Um, but yeah, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, all that kind of stuff. And I think, oh yeah, the, the Patreon, the Patreon. A lot of people don't know this about Patreon. It has an RSS feed. So you can just take that link and you don't actually have to listen on the Patreon app, which if we're being honest, kind of sucks, especially now because there's, have you heard about all the Apple nonsense? No. So Apple is like forcing apps to not use their own payment processors anymore. And so if you subscribe to oh. someone's Patreon on the Apple app, it's actually going to be more expensive because Apple is doing like a surcharge on top of that. What you should do is you should go to patreon.com on like a website and do your Patreon subscriptions there, be it for the Dungeon Bros or like any other Patreon, do it on a, a computer. And then when you log in on the app, you'll have those subscriptions, but it's not being processed through Apple because you didn't do it on the app. So just go ahead and do that. But the RSS feed, you can put it anywhere you want. It's, it's pretty sweet. I, have, I, I subscribe to a couple of podcasts, and it's very nice having them all centralized in a podcasting app of my choice instead of on the shitty, shitty Patreon app, all things considered. So, you know. I think that's all the, I think that's all the things. We could talk about what we've been playing uh, if we want. It's going to be kind of a lighter episode than normal, not as much to talk about. We're going to get into all of the upcoming releases that were announced at MagicCon. Uh, gave a quick rundown of the MagicCon things. We're going to talk about the fucking disaster that was that Marvel secret lair and uh, a, a, a funny that happened on D&D Beyond. So, uh, 
with that being said, Sam, let's go to the upcoming releases. We have a lot more to talk about after this recent MagicCon Las Vegas. Sam. Yeah, so as of course always, we'll start with Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, upcoming very soon, as of November 12th, we will have the 2024 revision of Dungeon Dragons 5th edition Dungeon Master's Guide coming out. Uh, uh, we Like like you said earlier, some November of our friends 12th. have already gotten theirs. and Yes, November 12th. Uh, some of our friends have already gotten uh, some advanced copies. We did not, but looks like there's some pretty good stuff coming in it. Uh, oh, yeah. and then I've already got that, mine uh I've already got mine pre-ordered. That'll be coming that's it releases on a Tuesday for some reason, which is really fucking weird. The Tuesday, Tuesday after this this podcast goes for the for the free feed. So the next episode, we're gonna have our little books. It'll be very exciting. It'll be great. Uh and then on top of that, on February eighteenth of next year, we will get the final installment of the core rule books, the Monster Manuel. Mm-hmm. Look forward mm-hmm. to that. Next, we're moving on to Magic the Gathering. Uh, finally, after MagicCon, we have a lot more dates announced, a lot more things known. Uh, but first up, uh, with pre-release being February, uh, being Mar- sorry, God, with pre-release being November eighth and full release being November fifteenth, we have Magic Foundations, the set of magic that, if you were to call magic magic, it would be magic. Yeah, magic's magic, and magic is the magic and the gathering of the magic all in this set at once together, at once together at yep. the same so, magic. So if you're listening on free feeds, it just came out uh, in pre-release and will be coming out for full release this Friday, and that a will be of- a five-year standard. Uh, okay. Yes, I. The delay today is unbelievable in the recording my goodness <laughs> you go you go <laughs> we apologize i'll run through all the the rest uh starting next year we have our remastered set of innistrad remastered that will release on january 24th mm-hmm. uh after that on february 14th we'll get a, the first full set core set of the year in a ether drift on april 11th we'll get tarkir dragon storm moving on to uh, the first Universes Beyond, that will be June 13th, and that will be Final Fantasy. Uh, next year uh, or on February, or sorry, God, next year on August 8th, uh, August 1st, we'll get our uh, next standard set, which will be Edge of Eternities, which will be the standard rotation um, for that year, followed up by the... Spider-Man, Universes Beyond. The date for that is still to be announced, but we'll be getting that in the later portion of the year. And we don't quite know what it is yet, but there is one more Universes Beyond that has been uh, hinted at, uh, and we will hopefully be seeing what that is coming soon. One would hope. One would hope. Uh, It's very weird, I think, that they did all of these release dates uh, announcing like every set, and then they're just not going to announce what the last one for the year is. Like it, it should be like you can leave it the date list like you did with Spider Man, but like I feel like you should know what it is and be able to announce that. Yeah, tell us. I mean, I don't know. Uh, now this this gets into uh, our our Patreon our Patreon subscriber Brandon Vol. His, his one thing that he wanted us to know is that he's very, very excited for Innistrad Remastered. And I think a lot of people should be very excited for Innistrad Remastered. We're getting some very good uh, sets that are going to be having cards reprinted out of that. We're going to be getting the first real reprint of Edgar Markov, uh, the world's most overrated vampire, in my, imagine, in, in my opinion. Uh, powerful, yes, but rather boring, I would assume. Um, I think Tarkir Dragonstorm is probably going to be the most magic-y set of the year, which is kind of sad. Um, we're, we're still kind of getting those gimmick sets like we've gotten this last year with Aether Drift and with Edge of Eternities. Um, uh, in 2024, we, we didn't really even get like a regular magic like standard set at all. The closest we got was Bloomboro, but that was still kind of a gimmick in a way. Um, so it's it's kind of sad that we're getting now half universes beyond. That is that is one of the big announcements from MagicCon is uh, starting in 2025, 
we're going to have half of the sets every year be universes beyond and then half of the sets every year being regular magic sets with the universes beyond sets being legal in all constructed formats. So they're going to be standard legal, modern legal, ever, everything legal. Um, at, at, we, we talked about this at length in our, our bonus action with uh, Wyatt, but I want to do like a temperature check again on that because I feel like I'm a bit, I'm, I'm, I'm a fair bit more sad than I was when we were recording, I think, because it, when you, when you actually look at what is, what is going to be coming out in 2025, it's like you're getting, you're getting your, your pod racing fast and furious magic universe set, which isn't, it's going to be pop culture references. And then you're going to get edge of eternities, which is your star Wars, star Trek, Spaceballs, magic set, which is just going to be pop culture references in a lot of ways. I, I have, I still have hope that edge of eternities is going to be like introducing this kind of like multiversal threat um, because why it brought up the whole Eldrazi thing. And it's like the Eldrazi Titans that we know are actually just kind of like little ones compared to where they actually have come from. And then Tarkir is like the only actual magic set that's going to feel like a magic set that we're getting all year. And I don't know. It just kind of, it just kind of makes me sad and it doesn't really feel like magic is magic anymore. It just kind of feels like magic is kind of Fortniteifying itself in just like ingesting all of these all of these like pop culture properties and i'm not nearly i'm not nearly as like hype about all the stuff as i was i think that was kind of the magic con glow in some ways uh but i think a lot of people are starting to like come down from that do you do you have your have your kind of thoughts and feelings really changed at all since last week i think that as far as it goes when it comes to the actual in-universe sets aether drift uh tarkir dragonstorm and Edge of Eternities, if they do well to the magic storyline, I think they can hold on to to that feeling of it being its own property. Like when it when we went through Bloomboro, um, Bloomboro could have very easily just been references to uh, uh, Redwall and to things like that uh, uh, properties that have you know, small, cute animals as the main uh, theme, but it did hold on to its magic-esque identity. Um, as far as, it, it, I think that they can hold on to these. Obviously, Aether Drift is going to be related um, to Kaladesh. Uh, Tarkir, like you said, is going, to be, is going to be right in line with Tarkir. And Edge of Eternities, we've already seen Tezzeret on the promotional material. Mm -hmm. And if, yeah, if they... If they keep it in that feeling of magic, it can be good. Now, bringing the universes beyond sets into standard, yes, it's the it's the Fortniteification. Um, I think, you know, I'm I'm not we're not necessarily magic boomers. We've only been playing for a mm -hmm. couple years here, but uh, uh, with with that. It'll start to definitely feel like less of the same game and. Uh, you know, it, it's it's one thing to sit across the table and play against a giant elder dragon. It's different to sit across the table and play against Captain America. It feels mm -hmm. like a very different game at that point. the The mechanics are still are still there. the The pacing and the interaction is still there. But overall, I think I don't want to say you know uh, some sort of form of get with it or get out. But I feel like that's going to be a lot of people's. Uh, uh, jumping off point is when it no longer feels like it used to be. Yeah. Um, in a lot of ways, people have always said that magic is about the gathering. I mean, that, that's a great reference, magic, the gathering, that magic has always been about the gathering. And in some ways, I think that's very, very true. It's about the gathering. It's about the playing of the game, but at the same, in the same breath, with these universes beyond changes, we're getting a situation where now we're still going to have the gathering, but the magic is starting to be lost a little bit. And that, and that just kind of makes me sad. So I hope, I hope that the universes beyond sets are good. Uh, I mm -hmm. hope, I hope they succeed because if they don't, then I think that's going to be like dire straits for the game. Um, yeah. But I, I also hope that eventually they realize that the well of good IP they can draw from is not as deep 
as as they might originally think. And so far, I think they've had mostly pretty good hits with like their proper uh, universes beyond properties. I even think Assassin's Creed was like a good property to identify. They just kind of fumbled it with the like actual boosters and the card set, like the card pool that they were creating for it. But like Lord of the Rings, I think it's, it was a slam dunk. Um, I think that Marvel, as as cringe as it might be, is exceptionally popular, of, exceptionally rich, and it's got a lot of great things to pull from. Final Fantasy, same kind of vibe. Um, and Final Fantasy, much like Lord of the Rings, is much closer to like a, a magic feeling universes beyond than some of these other things. But I don't know. I think I'm just I'm just kind of saddened by it all. I look forward to these remastered sets more and more because it just feels like it's like oh here's like the distilling of what magic once was in a lot of ways. So mm-hmm. and it's starting remastered. I can't wait for January. Um, let's get into some MagicCon uh, rehash. We did an entire episode as we've mentioned a couple of times with Typical Gemini about the information we got out of MagicCon 2024. Uh, a couple of things we want to touch on here. We've already talked about the half universes beyond um, the half of universes beyond sets for years going forward. Uh, universes beyond is going to be legal in all formats, including standard going forward. We've also touched on that uh, foundations. Interestingly enough, the new standard core set, if you will. It's going to be standard legal for five years. Uh, They have Jumpstart packs as well, which is very, very exciting. I think Jumpstart is one of our favorite kind of like beginner or just kind of like no thought process, just shuffle up and play. Uh, TM, sorry, Tolarian Community College. Um, But the the Foundation's Jumpstart exclusive cards, cards that only appear in Jumpstart boosters, are going to, in fact, not be standard legal. Uh, which is very weird, considering this is a uh, standard core set in a lot of ways. It kind of feels like, ooh, our Modern Horizons 3 Commander decks in a lot of ways to me. Um, but the the big thing that we, we ended up discussing quite a bit on, on our uh, bonus action recently was the combat rules changes that are going to come out with uh, Foundations. So as combat has worked since forever with Magic, is you declare your attackers, uh, the defending player gets to declare their blockers and if they declared two or more blockers the attacker would then assign what order those blockers would be dealt damage before damage occurs and then they go and deal that damage which allows the defending player to react and protect creatures going forward uh you will be declaring your attackers if they declare multiple blockers you do not decide what order these blockers are going to be taking damage until damage is being applied. What this means is that the defending player will have to guess or go out of their way to protect a specific creature, uh, which would then give the attacking player the ability to reorganize where they take, where they send the damage to do as much damage as possible. Um, I'm still in favor of that. Wyatt was a little bit more uh, apprehensive about that rules change. I like the fact that it's encouraging people to attack and incentivizing people to put their own creatures at risk more, uh, though it makes it much more difficult to defend against being attacked. I think that's good for the game in terms of just speeding up gameplay uh, in a lot of ways, but uh, that is what that is the major rules change that is coming down with Foundations. Um, I'm in favor. Wyatt was against. You were kind of the tiebreaker, so uh, you kind of played Switzerland last time. <laughs> what, have you <laughs> have, have have your thoughts really changed since uh, since that discussion? Uh, to recap my thoughts during that discussion, it was that it's not going to affect very much because, uh, again, mm-hmm. we've been playing for two and a half years now. We didn't actually know how the rules worked. We we played them correctly. It turns out, however. Um, this is a news to going to be a news to a lot of players. Mm-hmm. I do agree that it's going to speed up the game, and I think, especially in the commander format, that is a good thing uh, because kind of the most popular way to play is battle cruiser, and uh, there's often times where you get you get into battle cruiser style games, and 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 you come to a kind of a standstill um, because well, if I if I attack then I might lose this really valuable creature or, this, or these really valuable creatures or um, or if I, the, you know, I could... It, something big could happen that, you know, warrants a crackback at you. Uh, so, yeah, being able to push the game forward in whatever manner, enabled, enabling the game to speed up, not in the same way that, say, mana 
you know, acceleration mm-hmm. speeds up a game, mm-hmm. not the way that mass card draw speeds up a game, but the way that everybody who plays the game can speed up the game and make make it a more enjoyable experience and make you give you a chance to play more games throughout the night. Uh, especially in the commander sense, I, I've always been in the mind, I would rather play two to three hour long games than one two and a half hour game, you know? Um, like get in, the, mm-hmm. get in there, let your decks do your thing, let the game shake out how it's going to shake out and move on. Um, yeah, these kind of like big board states, everyone's afraid to attack. Everyone's afraid to like advance the game, uh, for fear of the crackback that'll happen. Uh, I think this will help mm-hmm. alleviate some of that. It's not going to get rid of it entirely, obviously, but yeah, that's a, that's a good rules change in, in my opinion. Uh, is there anything else that we want to touch on from Magicon? I think those are the big things, uh, the new upcoming releases. Uh, Universes Beyond, I mean, a lot of people are very, very upset about that, um, particularly mm-hmm. in the context of like the Broken Promises thing. Like When they first started doing Universes Beyond with, um, with Walking Dead cards, they, they made a point to be like, we're going to do, for any of these like new exclusive designs, we're going to do universes with inversions, and it's not going to really be legal outside of like, like the, the formats where every card is legal, basically. Uh, and then it was like, oh, they're gonna, we're going to do like a whole, we're not going to do like whole sets. They're just going to be like little one-offs or like included in packs kind of a thing. And um, oh, well, we're going to, Lord of the Rings, we're going to do a whole set for, and it's going to be modern legal, but a lot of the cards are kind of designed for modern, so it's fine, and uh, now we're just getting everything's legal and everything, and we're going to have exclusive universes beyond designs with the things like the Marvel Secret Layer drop we just had, which all have brand new designs, and there's no guarantee that they're going to get reprinted uh, in a Marvel set or, or any other universes within version, and a lot of people are just kind of not happy with that. Um, I, I'm of the mind that you can't be quoting people from almost a decade ago and expect them to hold that to the standard of today uh, in a lot of ways, but um, I don't know. I, I can understand why people are upset. Do you think that's kind of reasonable? Yeah, uh, I will say one thing that they have done with the universes beyond is taken it in, in the fact that, uh, for example, uh, uh, the Lord of the Rings was modern legal um, right out the gate is they were able to print some very powerful, very notable, <laughs> very kind of problematic cards in, in a lot of formats. Like the one, the one Ring. Between Orcish Bowmasters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And and uh, and that's been a lot. I've heard that problem as well, is a lot of people are just unhappy with the fact that these are universes beyond cards, that these are not, you know, why, why do the, why do we get to, why do we have to give those abilities to cards that, don't have our look and our feel to them. Now that they're in standard, they're going to have to be a lot more careful about where they put that sort of power into these releases. And I, I'm not entirely convinced that they're going to be doing that with care is the thing. Cause I mean, you look mm-hmm. at Spider-Man, it's like, you're going to have a card that has Spider-Man or Peter Parker or Miles Morales on it. And it's going to be a good card in standard. That's just that's just gonna be how it is. So like when when you get to these like they're making whole sets that are gonna be legal and standard. It's not like you're gonna find something that's magic feeling with every universe enough to make enough cards that like cater to that format. Uh, so I, I think that's kind of a, a losing fight for them in a lot of ways. But those were the big things out of Magicon. You can get some more in depth things in our last episode of Bonus Action with Wyatt. We had a lot of really good discussions there. I think it was it was a very fun episode. Uh, even with the, some of the sadness and apprehension that we had. But moving on, in the last episode of the Duels of Mandarks podcast, we got to talk about the Marvel Secret Lair release that was coming out that revealed Captain America, uh, Iron Man, Wolverine, Storm, um, for a, a really interesting Secret Lair drop, a lot of brand new, unique design for legendary creatures that you can build around. Uh, they seem very uh, Commander-centric. And some interesting reprints. The value, not quite there. They were like $10 more than a normal secret lair. So that was a whole thing. But due to their popularity, 
there's been a lot of consternation around the secret layer drop, which happened yesterday as of the recording of this. Uh, we did not go out of our way to to attempt to purchase any of these. The one of our friends uh, attempted to get the storm or the Wolverine. Did they not successfully? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they were attempting to get the Wolverine secret layer, but were not able to. And that is. Uh, Thanks to MTG Insider for this this wonderful uh, article. They d- they have really good stuff over at MTG Insider, by the way. Highly recommend. Uh, the Secret Lair website crashed six minutes into the opening of uh, the Secret Lair drop, and it was exceptionally inconsistent for hours after. Uh, MTG, the Secret Lair Hasbro website, crashed six minutes after going live with their Lair drop. Those who managed to get to the website within the first five minutes of the drop going live at noon Eastern time were able to secure a spot in line. Most customers shared a screen showing over an hour wait time, even after attempting to purchase within seconds of the drop going live. Uh, Currently, the Secret Lair website is down as of the writing of this. It is now sold out. Uh, The major updates we had were uh, 30 minutes after the website went down, it was back online and new customers were able to join the waiting queue. About two and a half hours after the release, the Arcane Signet Earth's Mightiest Emblem promo card was sold out in the United States, the UK, and the European Union. Uh, And then five and a half hours after the initial release at noon, all of the Marvel Magic Secret Lair drop products were sold out. The foils were sold out much, 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 much sooner than five hours after as well. Um, This has led to a lot, uh, tens of thousands of Magic the Gathering players that were hoping to get the Secret Lair drop were unable to altogether. Um, It's... (sighs) A lot of people were saying that it was going to be a disaster in the making, Um, And ever since they decided to move secret layer drops to a limited supply uh, fear of missing out method of distribution as opposed to print on demand, uh, we kind of I kind of I'm not surprised by this in the slightest. Uh, We had a smaller microcosm of this when Monty Python's secret layer dropped, uh, though most people that wanted to get one of them were able to. Uh, I mean, I was able to get a foil and a knob foil of that secret lair. So, like, it's that one was much easier. This one I kind of felt like was going to be a bloodbath altogether. Um, and one thing that was frustrating a lot of people were the amounts that people were able to buy. Uh, there's people that were within within the day putting up on eBay confirmed pre-orders for the arcane signet secret lair to the tune of a dozen for a single seller uh the several of the secret lair drops several like multiples of them so there were people that were able to get in and purchase a large amount of them as an individual uh or as a collection of individuals and then were able to immediately list them and try and flip them on the secondary market which i i think is just kind of bad for the community uh when it comes to these limited releases but all, all in all, this has been a massive failure uh, in terms of of like logistics and and mm-hmm. how they are handling uh, going about these secret layer products. Uh, you're you're our, you're a resident web developer. Uh, a, a website crashing within six minutes is especially when you should have known that it, you were going to get a certain volume. Just kind of seems. Um, negligent in a lot of ways what do you what do you kind of view from your experience how this how they were able to let this happen or if there's anything they could have done i mean so we've not this is not the first time we've seen mass uh uh traffic to a website of ma- of a, of a wizards of the coast property go down um mm-hmm. if you remember back to when uh, when people were trying to all cancel their subscriptions to D and D Beyond, conspiracy theories aside, uh, that also crashed. Here, they definitely should have prepared, and I don't know whether that is just the fact that the company itself has been shrinking um, in sense of the number of people they decide to employ. I don't know if that is because 
maybe it's because they uh, go to an outside vendor for maintenance and upkeep and things like that, and they just forgot. To, <laughs> this is legitimately forgot to uh, contact that vendor and tell them, "Hey, we're going to need more server uptime at that point." Mm-hmm. But overall, there is. Y- y- it's very hard to point to, to, you know, be sad for them at this point. Yeah. You're, you're putting up a product that, you know, people are going to want and then you're not preparing correctly for this. Also, it sucks that, like you said, this is not great for the community because some people are, are going in there and getting just so much product to resell. Um, and Wizards of the Coast doesn't care, you know. They're yeah. they're selling what they got. They got. They know how much profit they're going to make already. Uh, they're they're printing. They're like we're printing money. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we do. We're fine. And that sucks. Yeah, uh, I do want to say one thing about resellers. Um, there's a lot of these people are evil. These people are bad going around. And I think it is definitely um, not a good look to be having like a team of people that are trying to buy as much of this product as humanly possible just to resell all of it. And there are people that do that. And I think that's kind of shitty uh, in a lot of ways. I mean, we've seen that kind of stuff mm-hmm. with like the PlayStation five pro the 30th anniversary PlayStation products, the like all that kind of like limited time stuff that we get in all of these uh, like nerd industries, like these gaming industries. Um, I do want to make note though, an individual that's like, I'm going to get a couple of these secret layers, and if I flip one or two of them, then that covers the cost of everything. I have no problem with that. In hindsight, I wish I had gotten two foil Monty Pythons and two non-foil Monty Pythons while I had the opportunity, and then flipped two of them, and I would have gained like $30 on the whole transaction, you know? Uh, and then still had the product for myself. Like, I don't think that's morally bad. Um... But the fact that, well, for one, the Arcane Signet promo card, how was that sold out three hours before the rest of the products were sold out? Like, you're doing this promo for people that are buying this product, and you're not going to have enough of those promos to fulfill the quantity of these products that you had to sell in the first place. I think that's just exceptionally poor planning on purpose, and it feels... um, we nobody is happy with the limited the limited print supply of the secret layers and i've i the more i've thought about it the more i've even begun to question the economics behind it cuz we've seen with monty python we've seen with these marvel drops or this marvel drop in a couple of other secret layers too that aren't as huge but like they're sold out within a day Surely there are people that want to buy these products that are willing to buy these products that are willing to give them money that are not able to and instead are giving resellers on the secondary market more money than what Wizards of the Coast would have gotten. So I I, I question the economics behind we're going to make this many and we're going to sell this many and that's it as opposed to in, in the name of speeding up shipping. You're a multi. You're a multi-billion-dollar company. You can, you can print. You can do your limited supply amount print immediately, and then have a standing order ready to fit, like ready to send when you go over that amount and create that buffer. So if you bought it right at the beginning, you're likely going to have a little bit better shipping than if you waited like a couple days to buy yours. I think that's fair. <laughs> I feel like they're actively losing out on revenue because of this change in the sake for the sake of just like keeping it simpler for their logistics team. And that I don't, that doesn't make, that doesn't compute with me for a company that is very clearly trying to increase their revenue. They're creating new universes beyond they're changing how they're redo like releasing sets. And economically it's like, if you're going to have, if These are not the numbers at all. I'm just pulling numbers out of my ass for the sake of example. If you're making 10,000 secret layers and they sell out within five hours on release day, intuitively you should know you are going to be able to sell way more than 10,000 of them. If you lift that secret layer drop up for a week, 
you could have sold 20, 25, 30,000 of these if you had a print to demand model, which when you're printing six cards and some mildly f fancy packaging, your profit margin on those is going to be ridiculous, you know? So I, I don't under, I, I feel like they're shooting themselves in the foot on like every aspect of this with the only exception of shipping times, which you can alleviate by do, being like, all right, we're going to print 10,000 before we do the drop. And then we're going to have a standing order of another 5,000 ready. And if they go over that, we'll make another order too. And then just be like, listen, if you wait too long, your shipping time is going to be longer. So I, in no way do I think that this is benefiting them and is certainly not benefiting the people that want to buy these secret layers. Um, it's just kind of sad because some of these Marvel cards were really fucking cool um, and have a lot of potential to be very powerful. And before we started recording, uh, our good friend, uh, the Proxy Forge, I went over to the website. They do not have any proxies of the Marvel cards quite yet, though I would be shocked if uh, he did not have Marvel proxies. And uh, a lot of people are already saying, fuck it. All right. Well, you're put you're now pushing more people to proxy, uh, which is something you've actively not wanted to happen. So um, I don't know. I, I, I think this is a fail all the way around. And there's not really a charitable way to to view this in my mind. Do you have anything else you want to say about the this this terrible drop? It's it's an interesting thing that we have come to know over the past several years of doing this podcast, which is um, was Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro in general seem to be complete idiots that are missing the business department of their business. It feels like they just grab, they're like, all right, we got a good team of designers, and you, guy on the corner, you know, guy who just happened to be driving past the office today, you're now in charge. You get to make decisions. And it feels like the only reason these com this company is getting propped up is because they have such a longevity with the products being Magic the Gathering and D&D &D, that people love. Yeah. Like, if, if, you know, it feels like if, in, if at any point we were to... Like the community was like, all right, we're not buying this set. It feels like they might have to cancel all the other sets because they have, like I said, idiots in charge who have no idea how to handle money or logistics. That I love the bluntness of that. <laughs> That's very good. That is, that is very apt. Um, it, it's just devoid of common sense is what is what's really frustrating. It's like there's the like. I, I was not a business major. I don't have, I have a, a minor in entrepreneurship from my university that I don't use. Like I work, I work, I work mm -hmm. in media logist, like basically the logistics of television. And even I can look at this and be like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, this isn't working. This is clearly not working. This is clearly not benefiting you. It's not benefiting you optically. I cannot see in what universe this is benefiting you monetarily. And like, it's, I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like the longer this goes on, there's going to be a lot more pressure for them to go back to a print to demand model or at the very least a hybrid of like, we're doing an initial limited supply and then, um, expanding that supply later if needed and know that if we go to our limited supply and we hit that cap, anything after is going to take a lot longer. I, I think the community would be totally on board with that. So Take that for what it is. Um, last thing, we've got one little wrap-up item, and this is just kind of a little, a little funny. <laughs> uh, this is from Wargamer.com. We're going to move over to D&D &D now. Uh, with the upcoming release of the Dungeon Master's Guide, they, are update, they have updated the free Dungeons & Dragons uh, rules on D&D &D Beyond. Uh, they did this with the Player's Handbook. They've done this with every book release. There are certain aspects of the books that are just free to anyone uh, through the basic rules compendium on D&D &D Beyond. Uh, when they posted the Dungeon Master's Guide, uh, and, and the parts of it that would be in the free rules update, uh, they 
they basically posted all of it into the free rules update for about a day. Um, <laughs> the the main things that they did not include uh, was the Bastion feature. They, the Dungeon Master's Guide chapters on cosmology, adventures, campaigns were initially posted for free in addition to all of the magic items, uh, general advice and rules for the game. And the DM's Toolbox chapter, which was a 50-page segment that was covering everything from making your own homebrew material to firearms to NPCs, all of that uh, was included as well. Uh, since then, all of that has been stripped away, leaving only the content on poisons and traps as part of the basic rules. Um, in the D&D Beyond, the D &D Beyond changelog, my goodness, uh, Wizards explains that it mistakenly updated the free rules with co additional content emphasizing that these are only supposed to cover the basics and, quote, are not meant to be a substitution for the core rule books. Uh, we're happy to see that all of the tracking sheets and invaluable tool and one of an invaluable tool and one of the best features in the new DMG is still up for free. Uh, so a lot of the two, the pay, like one time use pages that you would get out of these books are available for free. So you can print extras, obviously. Um, if you're a Dean to be on premium subscriber, you already have access to the Dungeon master's guide. Everyone else will have it by the time this podcast goes live for free feeds, which is pretty exciting or the day after this goes live for free feeds. Um, in terms of logistics on the websites, uh, this kind of is a nice little segue from the Secret Lair side. I think it's hilarious that it was just kind of posted for free for a day. Um, but we also finally, it gave everyone a chance to kind of sneak peek the entire book in a lot of ways, which I think is fun. There's a lot of good information that's come out of that. And I think, I think the DM's guide is going to be vastly superior from its 2014 version. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the 2014 version was uh, there, and that's what we can say about it. It was there. It was there. This one, from what they've said, what we say, from what they've said, what they've what we've seen, it's going to actually be a helpful resource in Dungeon Masters. Um, and also, Watsy, figure out your production deploys. Come on, it's like I get that you guys like fired a lot of people, <laughs> but like. Maybe maybe this is maybe maybe this is your sign that you shouldn't have done all that at least to the scale that you were. Uh, I think I think I mean we've talked about this at nauseum before. It's like a lot of companies overexpanded during COVID and they had to realize they had to retract. I think some of them are mm -hmm. retracting a little bit too much and in the wrong places. Yeah. Uh, we're kind of seeing that a lot with Watsi, but. I don't know. That's that's really funny. If you were fortunate enough, you were able to get a, a longer look at the DM's guide way early, which is pretty cool. Uh, I can't wait to get my book personally. I think there's going to be a lot of really cool resources. And I, the next time I I, I run a game of D and D, I do not think it will be 2024's D and D. So, might be a 2024 campaign, <laughs> but with the 2020 <laughs> or the 2014 campaign with the 2024 rules. So. I think it's very exciting. If you're a new DM, I think it's going to be a, a great resource and existing DM as well. That is all we have. We got our, our, our little comment from our Patreon subscriber at the $15 a month tier, which is the tier to get your name right on the show. Brandon Vol. Thank you very much, Brandon. You're fantastic. Uh, very excited about Innistrad Remastered. That is kind of all we got. Be sure to check out the most recent episode of Bonus Action, uh, where we debrief all of the MagicCon Las Vegas news with our friend Wyatt. We're going to have an upcoming episode soon with a set, a set review for Magic the Gathering Foundations. Um, I am going to go to the bathroom because I've had to go to the bathroom since like five minutes into this episode, and it's been agonizing on me in a lot of ways. And the cat is nonplussed by anything that has been happening for the last 40 minutes. Uh, be sure to exercise your, your civic duty. Go out there and vote. Do all that stuff. By the time that you're listening to this, it's too late. <laughs> so <laughs> that's fun. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll be... Yeah, I'm going to go out and I'm going to vote. I'm going to check the box for... Um, I'm going to check the box for... Uh, uh, oh, my God. 
Oh my God. I had a bit, I had a bit, I had an entire bit planned about the, one of the, Oh God, Nicol Bolas. Jesus. (laughs) Nicol, Nicol Bolas for president. Just write that one in. So, you know, maybe, maybe get uh, a Vecna, the whispered one in there as well. You know, get a, get some vote for, get some vote for some, some people that are less evil in my estimation. So, (laughs) <laughs> anyway, uh, do you have do you have any Sam? Sam, this is Sam. This has been lovely as always. Uh, do you have any any parting words for our, for our dear friends before we wrap this up? A, a rather short episode. A little bit of a short one, but uh, yeah, just go ahead and uh, print your proxies of secret layers. Very much, very much. Uh, I, I might do that for Storm just to fuck around with with the possibilities of that, or better yet. Better yet, go to Moxfield, test out a like goldfish some hands with a deck with mm-hmm. your secret layer. See if you even like the play patterns that you would get into, assuming you had to not interact and have no interaction dealt at you. Like you might be like, "Ooh, Wolverine sounds really cool," and then you like build, put together a deck, and then you start playing it, and you're like, mm, "I don't like it." Or you might be like, "Ooh, yeah." I'm not I'm not a big artifact player, but I, I'm intrigued by Iron Man. I really like Iron Man. And then you play and you're like, oh, this is actually kind of fucking cool, you know? So play test and then uh uh print proxies. Yeah. I've seen I've seen people that have like sticker printers where like they get the stickers that are like just a hair smaller than a magic card, and then they can peel them off and like stick them on like a basic land so that you got like that same kind of thickness. Uh, obviously, you can go to a uh, friend of the show, Proxy Forge, theproxyforge.com. Uh, the Marvel Secret Layers are not there quite yet, but I imagine that would be very soon. He's got some cool, like, cyberpunk fantasy packs that he's cu- that he's got out recently, which are really cool. Uh, if you're into, like, I- are you familiar with Junji Ito? Like, that dark, like, yeah. manga. Yeah, he's got, he's got a whole, like, b- mono black proxy pack of, like, Junji Ito inspired art on them which is fucking dope as shit highly recommend uh not a sponsor but has been in the past theproxyforge.com yeah check them out all right that is that is all i'll, I'll, I'll end this rambling now that's all the time we have for this episode of the duels of mandorks podcast episode 79 of the duels of mandorks podcast we're almost we're almost 80 um we've already we're already as as a show we're already able to sl- to uh, collect social security and retire so that's pretty pretty dope but now we're now we're starting to get over the hill a little bit we're gonna really need to leverage that medicare uh payment that the show's been getting so you know (laughs) that with that said we love you very much and as always peace